So now we're on. It seems to be recording, yeah. Yeah. So we're we're down. Down. That's it. That's it. No, we should have a full 60 minutes. Usually it flashes up and it tells you how much you got. Yeah. But I, I know we've got about an hour on it. So, so, so did you see that um, documentary that they had on the Oh, yes, I did. I caught the end of it. We were talking about the front line. Yeah. The front line about the, the war, especially yeah, the first. Bush's war. Bush's war. Yeah. And uh, the. Um, Writer and producer was uh, the frontline guy. I mean, he's the frontline guy. He's, yeah, he's yeah, the guy right. that's been frontline from the beginning. You know? Right. The narrator as well. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I don't. I don't think he's the narrator. He's, okay. but he's the one that puts the thing together. Okay. And um, I was just on the boil the whole time. I was watching. It. Now, what got you? Yeah, I saw you. Yeah. What bothered you about the frontline? Well, I thought it was uh, self-service. You know, here, here was PBS. Uh, first of all, they called it Bush's War, as, as if it were, you know, exclusively his, right, and not ours, you know, and, and certainly uh, they, they didn't uh, take up any responsibility for it. And, you know, I always thought That's that they bore a lot of responsibility for it. I mean, I think that the banging the drum was something that they did. You know, PBS Frontline even did it. Frontline used to be an investigative show, and right. you know, now, I mean, it. it Certainly, preceding that invasion, you know, their exposés were exposés of falsehoods, like, oh, there's nuclear weapons in Iraq and all that mm -hmm. So I was, I, they, that's why I was boiling. I was waiting for that to come on, and you know, it never did. They never did, even in, in four and a half hours. I don't believe I didn't see every minute of it. And I don't believe they ever mentioned the responsibility of the yeah. press. Uh, you know, I thought that was a glaring. I mean, there were other reasons, stated reasons, for going into Iraq. Weapons of mass, mass destruction was the only one that provided the urgency. Well, I think that this this um, this documentary I, I hesitate to call it a documentary because it was so incomplete. But this documentary uh, seemed to uh, take a, a Shakespearean view of the whole thing, before. as if it were the character of these individual people, Condoleezza Rice and George Tennant, and something about you know tragic flaws in their character. Uh, conspired to get us into a war, as if that were, you know, as if that explained it. And, and this is this is what he did with it. I mean, he uh, yes. he had the the petty uh, uh, rivalries of Rice and Rumsfeld, and then the uh, close association of Rumsfeld and Cheney going back, you know, so how, how many years? And, well, and it so was all uh, very Shakespearean. What do you think is going to emerge as the consensus for you as the impetus for a war? Yeah, well, it all depends. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but because it won't, it, it won't be it won't be an accurate reflection of what happened. I think mm -hmm. from, from here on, history uh, will no longer you know, reflect you, events. Well, once reflect you get past the, 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 the facade that's been, you know, I think there will always be. I think there will always be a multitude of views. Yeah. I think everything is uncertain. Uh, you know, in, in the eyes of the observers, like let take uh, PBS for example. You know, it used to be a fairly reliable observer and analyst and reporter, and now you, know, you take. Take a PBS documentary and you watch it and you say, okay, there's a piece of truth. Right. And then you go to Democracy Now and you watch something on the air about the same subject, there's another little piece of truth. Okay. And then you read what was published on Common Dreams at the time and another little piece. And then you put them together and then you have to decide what to believe because, you know, everything's in conflict with each other. Okay. And so, you know, history is going to be written as, because um, that is the writing of history, it's not going to be written as, as something, as a chronicle of events but as a chronicle of opinions of events and, you know, of views of events, as if as if there were no objective fact. And this is the way I think that things are reported today, and that's the way that they reported that, as if there were no objective fact and the whole thing was explained by, uh, you know, petty disputes among ambitious people like Condoleezza.